Lhasa Isis, and for Theseus, Hippolyta, Philistra, Lords, and Attendants. Tis strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fancies, fantasies, that apprehend more than the cool reason ever comprehends. <laughs> the lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than the vast alchemist. That is, the madman, the lover, all is frantic. Sees heaven's beauty in the brow of Egypt. The poet's eye, in fine frenzy rolling, does glance from the heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. And as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them into shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Such tricks have strong imagination. That if would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. Or in the night imagining some fear, how easy is a push for those to bear. But, but all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfixed so together, were witnesses than fancy images, and rose to something of great constancy. But howsoever strange, and admirable. Here come lovers, full of joy and mirth. And to my son, Demetrius, Hermia, and Helen. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompanying your heart. More than to us, wait in your royal walks, your boards, your bed. Come now, <coughs> what masks, what dances we shall have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime. Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Philostrate. Here, mighty Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mask? What music? How shall we beguile the lazy time, if not with some delight? There is a brief how many sports are right. Make choice of which your highness will see first. Mm. The battle of the centaurs mm. to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to a heart. <laughs> well, none of that. <laughs> that I have told my love in glory my kinsman Hercules. The riot of the tipsy bacchanals, tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. That's an old device, and it was played when I was when I from Thebes came, Thebes came last to conquer. The thrice three music more, muses mourning the death of learning, late deceased in beggary. That is some satire, keen and critical, not sorting to a nuptial ceremony. A tedious, tedious brief scene of young Perimus and his love this week. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. That is, cross ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find concord of this discord? Uh, a play there is, my lord, some ten words long, <laughs> which is as brief as I've known a play. <laughs> but by ten words, my lord, it is too long. It makes it tedious. But of all the play, there is not one word apt, one player fitted. Uh, tragical, my noble lord, it is. For Pyramus therein doth kill himself, which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made my eyes water. <laughs> More merry tears of passion and loud laughter never shed. <laughs> oh, what are they that do play it? A half-handed men that work in Athens here, which never laboured in their minds till now. <laughs> and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with the same play against your natural. And we will hear it. No, no, my little Lord, it's not for you. I've heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world. Unless you find sports in their intents, extremely stretched and calm with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and beauty <coughs> render it. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. Hmm. Exit the door, 
I love not to see wretchedness overcharged and duty in his service perishing. My gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. But he says they can do nothing in his time. And the kind of wheat give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake, and what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have pro proposed to greet me with premeditated welcome. <laughs> Where I have seen them shiver and look pale, many periods in the midst of sentences throttle their practice of accent in their fears. <coughs> and in conclusion, dumbly have broken off. <laughs> Trust me, sweet, now to this silence, yet I picked a welcome. And in modesty and fearful duty, I reread as much from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love thereof, and the tongue-tied simplicity, in least speak most to my capacity. So please your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. And request the prologue. If we offend, it is with our good will. That you should think we come not to offend. But with good will, to show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we become but in despite. We do not come as minded to contest you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here that you shouldn't be here to repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not stand upon points. He hath rid his prologue like a rough colt. He knows not the stop. A good borrow, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. Who is next? Enter Pyramus and Thisbe, Wall, Moonshine, and Lion. Gentles, perchance you wondered at this show, but wander on till the truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present. Wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper at the witch, let no man wonder. This man with lanthorn dog and bush of thorns presenteth moonshine, for if you will know. By moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet a menace home, there, there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, come coming first by night, did scatter away and <coughs> rather did a fright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lying vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling, bloody breast. <laughs> and Thisbe tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died for all the rest. Let lion, moonshine, wall, and lover swain at large discourse while here they do remain. Exit prologue, <clears throat> be lion, and moonshine. I wonder if the lion may to speak. No wonder, my lord. One lion may when many asses do. <laughs> In this <coughs> same interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. <laughs> and such a wall as I would have you think, that in it crammed a hole or chink, to which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often and very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, this stone doth show that I am the same wall, the truth is so. And this the cranny is right and sinister, the which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime hair to speak better? 
<laughs> it is the greatest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Enter Pyramus. Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. Oh, grim look at night. Oh, night with hue so black. Oh, night with ever art which day is not. Oh, night. Oh, night, alack, alack, alack. I, whoops. I fear my Thisbe's promises forgot. And thou, O oh wall, O oh thou sweet, lovely wall, and thou stand'st between her father's ground and mine. Thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thy cheek to blink through with mine eye. <laughs> oh, thanks, courteous wall. Jove, shield thee well for this. But what do I see? No Thisbe do I see. O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss, cursed be thy stones for deceiving me. <laughs> wall methinks, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> no, no, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You see, it will fall back as I shall have told you. Uh, yonder she comes. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones. Thy <laughs> stones with mine and hair it up in me. <laughs> the my well line? Yes. Okay. I see a voice. Now I will do the chink. To spy, I can. I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love thou art, my love I think. Think thou what thou, think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander, I, I am trusty still. And I, like Helen, till the fates me kill. Not Shephalus to Procrus was so true. As Shephalus to Procrus, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall! <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. <laughs> Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straight away? To life, till death, I come without delay. Except Pyrrhus and Thisbe. <laughs> Thus have I, wall, my part discharged, discharged so. And being done, thus wall away. Now is, the mur now is the mural down between his two neighbors. No remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest <laughs> stuff that ever I heard. <laughs> the best in its kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse. If imagination amend them, it must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. <laughs> if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts in, a man and a lion. <laughs> you ladies, Whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion wrath in wildest rage doth roar. <laughs> then know that I once snug the joiner am. A lion fell, nor else no lion's down. For if I should as lion come in strife into this place, to a pity of my life. A very gentle beast of good conscience. The very best out of beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. This lion is a very fox for his valour. Not so, my lord, for his valour cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I'm sure, cannot carry his valour, for a goose carries not the fox. It is well, leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. 
he is no present, and the horns are invisible within his circumference. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man I, the moon do seem to be. Oh, this is the greatest error of all the tech, all the rest. The man should be put into the lanthorn. How is it else the man in the moon? He dares not come there for the candle, for you see, it is already in snuff. I am weary of this moon. Would he would change? It appears, by a small light of discretion, that he is in the way. <laughs> and yet, in courtesy and all reason, he must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Why all these should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. But silence, here comes Thisby. This old ninny's tune. Where is my love? Be. <laughs> well shown, Moon. Truly, the Moon shines with a good grace. Well, I and take Sisby's back on the egg. Well, mouse, I am. And so the lion vanished. <laughs> and then came Purims. And her parents. Sweet Moon, I thank thee, thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, Moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take the truest Isby sight. But stay, O oh spite! But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here! Eyes, what do I, what do you see? How can it be? O oh dainty duck, O oh dear thy mantle good, but stained with blood! Approach ye furies fell. O oh, fate, come, come, cut thread and thrum. Quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend would near to make a man look sad. He shook my heart, and I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, did thou mine frame? Since lion hath vile deflowered, my dear, which is no. <laughs> No, which is the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears, confound, out, sword, and wound. The pap of Pyrrhus, I that left pap where half doth hop, stabs himself. <laughs> thus I die. Thus, thus, thus. Now I am dead. <laughs> now I am fled. <laughs> and my soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Exit moon shot. Now, die. 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 Dead. Die. <laughs> <laughs> no, die. But an ace for him, for he is but one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead. He is nothing. <laughs> With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover <laughs> and prove alas. <laughs> <laughs> How changed Moonsign is gone before this becomes back and finds her lover. She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends play. Re-enter Bisby. Methinks she should not use a long one for such a pyramus. I hope she will be free. <laughs> A moat will turn the balance. Which Pyramus, which Thisbe is the better? He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. She has spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she moans, Vile Thisbe. Thisbe. Do I have a white? Oh, okay. A snake, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, rise! Speak! Speak! Quite down. Dead. Dead? The tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. 
these my lips, this cherry nose, these yellow castle cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make bone, his eyes were green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come, come to me. With hands as pale as milk, lay the main gore, since you have shore with shears as the red of silk. Tongue, no word. Come, trusty sword, come, blade, my breast in view stabs herself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Page, continue. That was somebody else's. No, it's <laughs> And farewell. And farewell. Oh, farewell. Oh, I see. Stabs herself and farewell, friends. That's this be ends. Aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> Moonshine and rhyme and death. Very good. Oh, and wall, too. <laughs> oh, no. I assure you, the wall is down that part of their fathers. Will it please you to see the epilogue, or to hear a Bergamas dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. Never excuse. For when the players are all dead, there needs none to be played. <laughs> Marry, if he that writ, writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself at, in Fisby's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. <laughs> and so it is, truly, and very notably discharged. But come. Your Bergamas, let your epilogue alone. That's the iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Love us to bed, tis almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn as much as we as this night we have overwatched. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends to bed. A fortnight hold me this solemnity. In nightly revels and new jollity. All exit and depart. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy ploughman snores, all with weary task forgotten. Now the wasted brands and glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night that the graves all gaping wide, every one lets forth his sprite, for the church way paths do lie. And we fairies that do run by the triple hickets team from the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream. Now our frolic, not a mouse, shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with bloom before to sweep the dust behind me. Enter Oberon and Titania and Zendra. Through the house, give gathering light, by the dead and drowsy fire, every elf and fairy spread, hop as light as bird from briar, and this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. First, rehearse your song I wrote, to each word a warbling note, hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day, through this house each fairy strayed, to the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create ever shall be fortunate, so shall all the couples three ever true and loving be, and the blots of nature's hand shall not in their issue stand, never mole, hair lip, nor scar, nor mark prodigious, such as are despised in nativity, shall upon their children be. With this field do consecrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace, and the owner of it blessed ever shall in safety rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me, all oh, my break of day. Exit over on the